important skills I find that you should learn when you are a wheelchair user. Not only does it help you navigate difficult streets and terrains, it can also make you feel heaps more confident as a wheelchair user. In this video, I'm going to be showing you all the different types of wheelies, how to hold a wheelie, how to pop a wheelie. I'm also going to be sharing with you some of my really valuable tips and tricks. I'm confident that after watching this video, you will have the tools you need to master this very important skill. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and let's get on with this video. <laughs> <laughs> home now and this is probably the safest place to start practicing. What are the different types of wheelies? Well, we have the very handy pop-up or the bunny hop I like to call it sometimes. We have the going up a curb wheelie and then we have the going down a curb wheelie and we also have the back wheel balance. What is the benefit of a pop-up? Well, a pop-up is a great starting point to learn how to do a little wheelie. So this is a great example to do a little pop-up wheelie where we've got a difference in textures on the ground and we've also got a little bit of a curve and if I wasn't to do a wheelie my front plaster would fall out. Would fall out. So this is where we really want to be doing a pop-up wheelie like this. Once you have gained a little bit more confidence in doing the pop-ups, you may be able to progress onto going up curves. So the next skill is a back wheel balance. It can really help gain your confidence as a wheelchair user. You can then progress onto larger curves, larger steps, going down ramps. Not only that, it can really help reposition you. I get really sore and stiff sitting in my wheelchair all day but sometimes doing a back wheel balance feels so nice because it just kind of, for me, I can kind of stretch my back out a bit and that just feels so so good. Also when you're having a conversation with someone it can reposition your neck. We are often kind of like this all the time um, or we're like this trying to talk to people. Can you relate? Thumbs up if you can relate. When you're talking to people, you can actually go into a back wheel balance and it slightly repositions the neck. Did you see that? Did you see that? I'm keeping my eye line going into a back wheel balance then changes my neck position. A back wheel balance is great for is navigating uneven ground. Here we've got some textured ground on the concrete. This is to alert people with visual impairment that there is a crossing coming up. Now when we go over it, it can be very loud and it can also cause our feet to come off of the foot plates. So sometimes when there is textured ground like this, I like to put myself into a back wheel balance and this makes it a lot more comfortable, like so. Okay, so now I'm going to move over onto how to actually do a wheelie. So the first thing you may want to consider is, is your wheelchair correctly set up? So our large push wheels sit on a piece of tubing within the chair. Now, if your wheels are set too far back, you're not gonna be able to pop a wheelie up because you're not gonna be able to get that tilt. Some people have to have their chairs set up that way uh, because for medical reasons, they may not be able to do a wheelie or it may be dangerous. So you may have your chair slightly set further back by an occupational therapist. Have your wheels too far forward on that bar and the chair is going to be ultra tippy. 
<laughs> funny story for you. I remember I went to wheelchair services once and they let me try one of their wheelchairs that was completely incorrectly set up. Wheels were set so far forward, I was just constantly falling back and I was just like, gotta get me out of here. And that was under medical professional advice. I believe I was pregnant as well at the time, just to throw that in for good measure. Anywho, I digress. <laughs> so the first type of wheelie that I recommend you start with is the little p <laughs> the first wheelie that we're going to learn is the pop-up wheelie. Now make sure that you have someone with you who you trust, um, who can stand behind you. Make sure you're sitting in your wheelchair correctly. I make sure that my bottom is all the way to my backrest and I'm sitting confidently and sitting heavily in my wheelchair, if that makes any sense. What I want you to do is I want you to imagine that your wheels are a clock face. To imagine it from your point of view, so the wheelchair user's point of view. So we've got a 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, and so forth, coming back round to nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at the top. I want you to put your hands into a 12 o'clock position. What you need to do then is pull back to 10 o'clock, and then quickly move forward, pushing sort of upwards, pulling upwards your casters and putting your hands into the two o'clock position. Like that. However, if you are just practicing, it may look like this. And just a tiny, teeny weeny little pop is all we want right now because that's giving you the foundations to start practicing. So we're at 12 o'clock. We move back to 10 and then push forward, pushing those casters upwards, landing at two o'clock. When you are practicing this technique, you wanna make sure that it is a really nice fluid motion. So pulling back and we go forward. What you can do as well is when you are first starting out trying to do the pop-ups, you can also lean forward. So having your hands at 12, pulling them back to 10, and move forward. Now, when I was first practicing these pop-ups, I found it was great practicing on carpet or a chunky rug as I um, um, uh, that, that. It gave me a sense of security. Also, it helps um, give the wheels a little bit of stability. Now, let's see some examples of the pop-up wheelie in the outside world. Grass is a bit of a nightmare when you're a wheelchair user. You push and you hardly go anywhere. And sometimes just do little pop-ups across. So once you have mastered that little pop-up wheelie, you can then start practicing going up larger curbs. And let's just have a look at those out in the wild. And I would suggest you start with a very, very little curb and start with almost like a pop-up. So you want to have a nice fluid motion, be committed and go for it. So here we've got a really good example of a little curb that I can do a pop-up to start practicing. So wheelie, pop-up and over. So I'm popping up, ready, pop-up, can lean forward a bit as well to help you give that momentum. Like that. Then what you can do, once you've nailed that, you can move on to a little bit of a bigger curb. Okay, next level up. Okay, so the curb is a little bit higher, and I would suggest you do this when you're feeling confident, and you are confident in popping those wheelies. You need to do it in one good fluid motion. If you don't, you could get stuck on the curb like a tortoise on its back. And you've got to really push forward and push up. So here we go. So you're feeling confident with your pop-up wheelies. What is next? Well, in my opinion, it's the back wheel balance. One of my favoritest skills that I can do in my wheelchair. Okay, so you will need four, that's eight, four, four blocks. Now you could get four bricks, sturdy rocks, or I have got 
these sturdy planks of wood. Now you'll probably need someone to help you with this and place them either side of your wheels like this. And one wheel behind. Okay, now if you can move up from a completely stationary position like this, your chair could potentially be in a very good position. If you can't pop up from this position, you may need someone to help tip you back. And it's a good idea if you are just practicing to have someone behind you to catch you if you fall. But bring yourself up like this, and then you can really start practicing because the wheels aren't going to fall anywhere and you can keep yourself in this position. All right, so this feels really, really comfortable to me. So we've got the blocks in, Sean. How's it looking dashing, I have to say. <laughs> I'm just pushing onto them. <laughs> Does that, do you feel more confident with those blocks there though, as if they weren't? Look, you're holding it. Yeah, because it's not rolling forward. So does that feel... If you took those blocks away, I'd roll forward and just go straight down. So do you feel a bit more confident with those blocks there? Well, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> hey. hey, I haven't got a safety net behind me. Why are you making me do this without a safety net? But the great point of this exercise is, is you can start practicing and um, you can start setting yourself goals. So one goal could be how high can you lift up the front casters and you can start bringing yourself up higher and higher. Another great thing you can then start practicing is moving your back away from the backrest and finding that center of balance and stretching yourself out. Another thing you can start playing around with is the positions of your hands. I'm like this, I can move my hands a little bit. You can then start practicing holding your wheels with maybe your thumb and forefinger. You can start practicing with one hand. One hand in the air. Can we do no hands? I think that's a bit ambitious, isn't it? Can anyone do no hands? One, two, three, woo! <laughs> Um, another thing you could do is to do it blindfolded again at your own risk and with someone there to help you. But by closing your eyes, you can really focus on that point of balance. <laughs> then what you can do is you can start moving away the blocks. Suggest you move the front blocks away. Then you can start balancing on the back blocks. So now we are going to see Jem on location using a back wheel balance out in the wild. So behind me, the slope starts to get a little bit steeper and that is when it's quite a good idea to sometimes go into a wheelie position. I actually find that the steeper the hill or the incline, the easier it is to wheelie. Because you're gonna get a lot more speed. So what I do is I go into a back wheel balance and then I sit back and then I can just let the wheels flow through my hands nicely. Now what you can feel when you're in this position is almost like a biting of the gravity. You can feel and kind of pull against that and that will pull you down. Sometimes when the ground is uneven like this, you may want to pop yourself up into a wheelie. You may want to wheelie down a hill when the incline is steep to prevent your casters from catching and tipping you forward. It's also a great way of controlling your speed. Some slopes and hills and ramps are so steep, there is no way that we can get down them without going on a back wheel balance. Ah. <laughs> and some slopes are just too good to do a careful wheelie down. Sometimes I just like to go for it. Now you're up the curb, what goes up must come down. Doing a back wheel balance down a little curb, you've got to really make sure that you are very, very confident in your back wheel balances. So here I am, I have assessed the curb as it were. I've got my casters at the edge off the curb and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop back up into a back wheel balance 
move myself forward and then pop down like that. Feel like it. Feel like it. Looks a bit bouncy. I need some shock absorbers in this wheelchair. For sure. You wouldn't I not can, be doing it too often. This is the thing, like we've been filming this and doing it quite a few times. It's def going up and down curves is definitely something you don't want to be keep on doing. It's a good idea to keep practicing, um, but doing it too many times can cause a lot of pain. A bit at a time, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, my wonderful friends, I really hope that this video was of use to you. If you found this video valuable, maybe consider buying me a coffee, or if not, maybe consider subscribing for more videos like this. Let me know if there are any more sort of how-tos that you want to see. I do have a whole playlist dedicated to basic wheelchair skills, so make sure you go and check that out after this video in case there's anything that you have missed. I really hope that this video has been of use. Remember, tag me on your social media, show me you practicing. I'd love to see your progress and I will definitely share that as well. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Bye!